check the jolt of electricity on the chart when Powell, during that news conference, effectively nixed the prospect of future bigger double-barreled hikes. Listen. 75 basis point uh, in an increase is not something the committee is actively considering. What we are doing is uh, we raised 50 basis points today, and, and we've said that, again, assuming that economic and financial conditions evolve in, in ways that are consistent with our expectations, there's a broad sense on the committee that additional 50 basis increases should be on, 50 basis point increases should be on the table for the next couple of meetings. So we're going to make those decisions at the meetings, of course, and we'll be paying close attention to the incoming data and the evolving. Okay, so data dependent. Joining me now to, to kind of parse everything that he has said, Mizuho Securities U.S. Chief Economist Steve Rusciuto and Stiefel Financial Chief Economist and member of the Chicago Federal Reserve's Advisory Committee, Lindsay Piegza. Lindsay, I want to begin with you. You know, what did Powell say, in your opinion, that gives you the best idea of how he and the FOMC will proceed beyond we'll start to see 50 basis point hikes in June, July? And is that enough? to get the arms around this bear of inflation. Well, it was interesting because the chairman, yes, took the 75 basis point increase off the table, but he also emphasized the committee's focus on a soft landing, sending a signal that while we may see some additional 50 basis point increases, the committee is likely to back off back to 25 basis point increases if needed in order to ensure a, a more uh, a more, a more soft landing or a more tame response from the economy, emphasizing that, yes, the economy at this point can withstand a further rise in rates as the household balance sheet and financial balance sheets are well equipped and the labor market is solid. But he also highlighted those downside risks stemming from ongoing policy response overseas and, of course, international conflict. Steve. All you have to do is talk to CEOs, and we do that every single day here. They say everything is more expensive. Wages, their materials, things they have to buy, the, the, the time that they wait for the supply chain issues to work their ways through. So a 50 basis point hike, I mean, listen, I'm not pushing, but here and there piecemeal, is that going to be enough to solve the problem that Jay Powell was very clear about? We have to deal with inflation. Well, it's not the 50 basis point move per se that we're talking about. It's what's been discounted into the marketplace. The marketplace going into the FOMC meeting uh, today and the announcement had discounted 3% Fed funds rates by the end of the year. you got to remember, we started the year at 0 to 25 basis points. So that's a very, very large move. You go back in history, you got to go back to the 1994 period uh, where Alan Greenspan did orchestrate a soft land with a 300 basis point rise in rates, and you ask yourself a question, are we in a comparable period in 1994? And the answer is no, we're not. The effect of the rate hikes this time are actually going to be greater than they were in 1994, because offsetting the move um, at the front end in 1994 was a big decline in long-term interest rates. Not only that, we came off of a very, very deep recession, and we had a jobless recovery, which meant there was still pent-up demand by the time the Fed was raising rates. This time through, there is no pent-up demand. So I think the the effect is going to be here is a much, much more dramatic slowdown in the economy than the Fed has been anticipating. And I think they're looking at what's happened in terms of forward rates and saying, wait a second, maybe we're getting a little too far fetched here. Maybe we've pushed things too far. Let's just take a pause and see. I don't think they've eliminated 75 basis points uh, at all. Um, I think they've just taken it off the table for the next two meetings. Okay, so, so am I hearing you say the R word recession here, that that's what's coming and that's why they see that? Well, I think it's a growth recession, and I, what I mean by that is the economy is going to dip below potential GDP for several quarters in a row. We've already seen one negative report. I would not be surprised in the next four quarters to see another negative GDP report. Uh, Lindsay, we just got data out today that small businesses and yesterday are getting killed by the bigger businesses who can afford to pay higher wages to lure workers, and the small guys who are the backbone of this U.S. economy cannot. Let me play what Fed Chief Powell said about wages. It was almost like he said that uh, it was like he was whistling in the dark, hoping that we don't have a wage price spiral. Listen, and then I'll have you comment. We don't see a wage price spiral. spiral. We, we see that companies have the ability to raise prices and they're doing that, but there have been price shocks. So I, I just think um, it, it takes you back to uh, the basic point was that we know we need to ex expeditiously move our policy rate up to ranges of, of more normal, neutral levels, and we need to look around and, and, uh, and keep going if, if we don't see that financial conditions have tightened adequately or that the economy is behaving in ways that suggest that, we, that we're not where we need to be. 
Lindsay, uh, no 75 basis point hikes for now, even as you hear, not, forget the restaurants and bars, they are really having trouble. You know, I was talking to a dentist who cannot find people to make the molds for things like, like uh, you know, mouth guards and things like that. They can't find workers. So is Powell a little late in the game here or, or not being sort of focused enough on what's going on with wages? Well, I think he's focused on the policy metrics that he can control. Trying to entice sideline workers back into the labor market is really a result of lingering fiscal policies. From a monetary policy standpoint, the inflationary pressures that he's focused on are stemming right now from the supply side of, of the equation. When he talks about the ongoing supply chain disruptions, when he talks about the further disruptions to the agriculture sector, the energy sector as a result of international conflict, this is where he says a lot of that price pressure is coming down the pipeline, but it will expectedly ease. The Fed remains very optimistic that as balance is restored, we'll start to see inflation tick down in the second half of this year and markedly decline in 2023. So I think that focus on uh, where the price pressures are coming for outside okay. of fiscal policy implications is really driving the Fed's focus at this point. Boy, uh, Steve, we're looking at a major rally here. <laughs> you know, you've got the Dow Jones Industrials up 760 points points. S&P, NASDAQ charging ahead. And, and, you know, earlier I was looking at some of the movements here. You earlier had the NASDAQ down 196 points. The Dow had been down 106, the S&P down 26. And you can see there is a complete reversal here. Is this relief? Put a word on it. Well, I think you're 100 percent correct. I mean, if you think about the algorithms that drive a lot of the uh, purchases in the equity market are driven off the 10 year note and the 10 year note yield has come down rather dramatically. So you're seeing a nice reversal in the marketplace. The other thing is a lot of equity investors have been holding on to the view that the Fed would take a pause at some point in terms of not overkilling the economy. I, I, I happen to disagree with that view. I, I still think that you're going to be in an environment here in which we're going to have a much, much more dramatic slowdown in the economy than than the markets are currently anticipating. And I think there'll be an additional adjustment um, that takes place in the equity market as we go forward. Doesn't mean we can't end the year on a good note. I think the next big shoe to drop in the equity market is going to be when analysts begin to revise down their earnings numbers, which we haven't seen happen. Most of them are just holding their earnings numbers uh, together, and that's why the earnings revision trackers are dropping. The next big shoe to drop in equities is really going to be when analysts start taking down their 2023 numbers. And I think that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Oh, okay. So, so you're pretty bearish on, on earnings and, and what happens as we go down the line. Lindsay, what distortions do you see uh, by the Fed maybe being a little late, if you do believe that, and uh, you know, now really worried that there could be a recession, and that's crimping their ability to tamp down inflation? Well, we're already seeing some signs of weakness in the economy. The latest reads on the ISM manufacturing indices, uh, the, the ISM service sector indices, we're, we're starting to see this loss of momentum. We're still in positive territory. We're still seeing positive activity, but it's that second derivative decline giving a way to a slower pace of positive growth. And as that momentum continues to wane, as fiscal stimulus drains from the system, as consumers eat through that existing stockpile of wealth accumulated during during the pandemic, we're going to return not only the pre-pandemic levels of GDP, which was, if you remember, slower to uh, closer to 2%, but we're likely to see a further mm. loss of activity as the Fed continues to tighten with the first real negative print in the first quarter of next year, as we're predicting. Wow. Okay, folks, we're now seeing a gain for the Dow of 813 points. NASDAQ up 331, S&P up 105. Question is, does it last? Lindsay, Steve, wonderful to have you.